Hello everyone, I am Vaijanti KS, pursuing my final year engineering at KS Institute of Technology and I am intern at MRZ Technologies and I completed my six weeks of training on embedded systems. The project I'll be presenting you is microwave oven simulation. Here is a brief overview of topics I have learned during the internship program. Introduction to C and data types. C is a general purpose language and mid-level language which can be used to develop software like operating systems, databases, compiler and so on or to develop portable applications. It has various data types like char, int, float, or double, etc. And I've also learned of, uh, about arrays, pointers, and functions used in C and conditional constructs and operators, and also storage classes and preprocessors. And also, I've learned the difference between microprocessors and microcontrollers, and introduction to embedded systems with the help of microcontrollers, and an overview of different software used, that is, MPLAB ID, PiximLab, and XC8 compiler. And I've also attended DISHA workshop. So this is the contents of my project, introduction to embedded system, microprocessor versus microcontrollers, microwave oven as an embedded system, requirements of the project, architecture of Pixim Lab, internal architecture of pix 16 fa 7 a project demonstration, and learning out outcomes. First of all, what is embedded system? The term embedded system refers to a computer system integrated with a computer processor, computer memory, and input-output peripherals devices to perform specific function within the mechanic or electronic system. So this is the picture of an embedded system on a plug-in card with processor, memory, power supply, and external interfaces. So embedded system can also be defined as an isolated system, specifically designed to perform a designated function with the help of its hardware and embedded software. So coming to the structure diagram of embedded system. As we know, an embedded system is a microprocessor based computer hardware system with software that is designed to perform a particular function, either as an independent system or as a part of large system. So the basic structure of an embedded system includes the following components, sensor, analog to digital converter, processors, digital to analog converter, and actuators. So what are sensors? Sensors convert physical sense data into an electric signal. Analog to digital converters change an analog electrical signal into a digital one. Processors process digital signals and store them in memory. And digital to analog converters change the digital data from the processor into analog data. Actuators. Actuators compares the output given by the digital to analog converter to the actual output stored and stores the approved output. If the actuator is attached to a fan, for example, so the actuator can turn on the fan if necessary. Coming to the categories of embedded system. Embedded systems are classified based on performance and functional requirements into four categories, that is real-time embedded systems, standalone embedded systems, network or networked embedded systems, mobile embedded systems. So real-time embedded systems. Real-time embedded system gives the required output in a defined time interval. They're often used in medical, industrial, and military sectors because they're responsible for time-critical tasks. For example, a traffic control system. So these Real-time embedded systems are of three types, hard real-time, firm real-time, and soft real-time. Hard real-time, this should meet its deadline. It can be as a life-critical application. Firm real-time, it is similar to hard real-time properties. Soft real-time can have tolerance in meeting its deadline. Standalone embedded systems. Standalone systems are not reliant on a host system. Like any embedded system, they perform a specialized task. However, they do not necessarily belong to a host system, unlike other embedded system. For example, a calculator or MP3 player. Next, network embedded system. 
they rely on wired or wireless networks and provide output to other system example home security and point of scale systems mobile embedded system small size systems that are designed to be portable are mobile embedded system for example digital cameras so what are the requirements to choose an embedded system these are reliability cost effective this should be cost effective the system should be cost effective and it should be of low power consumption and efficient usage of pro processing power and efficient usage of memory so these are the points to keep in mind while choosing an embedded system so these are some examples of embedded system mobile phone tablet washing machine tv microwave oven and refrigerator ATM machine, Wi-Fi modem, printer, traffic lights, etc. So, what are the difference between microprocessors and microcontrollers? Microprocessor is a computer process where the computer processor where the data processing logic and control is included on a single integrated circuit or a small number of integrated circuits. The microprocessor contains arithmetic, logic, and control circuitry required to perform the functions of a computer's central processing unit. While a microcontroller is a small computer on a single metal oxide semiconductor integrated circuit chip, a microcontroller contains one or more CPUs along with memory and programmable input output peripherals. And um, so, we can see the difference here also. So, see, microprocessor consumes more power than microcontroller. So, microcontroller consumes less power. So, microprocessor has only one CPU embedded into it, whereas microcontroller has a CPU, a fixed amount of RAM, ROM, and other peripherals all embedded on, onto it. Micro processor are wisely used in computer systems, whereas microcontroller is widely used in embedded system. Microprocessor has many instructions to move data between memory and CPU, whereas microcontroller has one or two instructions to move data between memory and CPU. So, microwave oven as an embedded system. Microwave oven is an electric oven that heats and cooks food using microwave radiation. So a microwave oven is a household appliance that has revolutionized modern home kitchen. So there, there are many families using this microwave oven. So the, because they are so quick and efficient and they channel heat energy direct to the molecules inside the food. So what are some benefits or advantages of the microwave oven? The microwave oven use, uses less energy than a cook stove if it cooks or reheats small amounts of food. So less energy, quick reheating, easy to use and easy to clean. Quick reheating in the sense like microwave can heat or reheat food in record time due to the radio waves being used. This also makes them environmental friendly easy to use because the oven turns off automatically because it has time that is set when the cooking begins. So you, we don't need to worry about leaving it unattended. Also, it does not produce any flame. So even the children can operate the oven easily without any fear. Easy to clean because since the material inside the oven is glass made and smooth, cleaning the cooking cavity is extremely simple. Next. So there are Different modes implemented in my project, different modes of microwave oven. So they, these are micro mode, grill mode, convection mode, and start mode. I have implemented four modes in my project. What is micro mode? In this mode, food is cooked in a traditional way and the maximum time is 60 minutes. So 60 minutes is set as the maximum time and the maximum power is set as 900 volts. So grill mode. So grill mode, is this mode is simply used for grilling, grilling the food. There is another grill heater placed in a specific location that can provide the grill effect. Convection mode. So in this convection, in this convection mode, the heater is turned on and the fan is provided within the microwave chamber 
the circulates air throughout the chamber to give that baking effect to the item or food placed inside coming to the requirements of my project what are the requirements of my project knowledge in embedded c and mp lab id software x8 compiler pixim lab simulator pix16 s77a microcontroller so this is the microcontroller i'll be using for my project and this has like 16 cross 4 clcd clcd is character liquid crystal display and tactile switch and matrix keypad and timers so i'll be briefing about this components embedded c embedded c is a programming language which is used to control the hardware peripherals used in the embedded system it plays a crucial role to make the microcontrollers run and perform some actions so we can see the difference between c programming and embedded c programming c programming possesses native development in nature whereas embedded c programming possesses cross development in nature uh, c programming is independent of hardware architecture hardware architecture so uh, embedded c is dependent on hardware architecture like microcontrollers or other devices so embedded c is a set of language extensions for the c programming language by the c standards committee to address com commonality issues that exists between c extensions and different embedded systems so they typically requires non standard extensions to the c language in order to support enhanced microprocessor features such as fixed point arithmetic multiple distinct memory bank and basic input output operations so this is the software which have used for coding my project mp lab id so mp lab integrated development environment is an expandable highly configurable configurable software program that incorporates powerful tools to help us discover configure develop and debug and qualify embedded designs for most of our microcontrollers and digital signal controllers for my project i have used version 5.35 which is a snapshot of it so this is the snapshot of my software in my system now coming to the architecture of pixim lab so there are many different components associated with it there is a microcontroller that is pic 16 f7 77a in in my case like for example i have used this in my project so i'll be explaining about this as a microcontroller here and general purpose input output um and then double e prom temperature sensor analog to digital converter character liquid crystal display matrix keypad and solid state storage device that uses integrated circuit assemblies as memory to store data and digital keypad buzzer leds and rs232 so this is this is used for serial communication transmission of data so overall pixim lab is a real time emulator of development boards with integrated mp lab x avr gdb debugger It supports several devices or spare parts that can be connected to the boards for simulation. So this is the Pixim Lab simulator. So this is the board. This is the Pixim Lab simulator board. So if to implement my project, I am going to use this simulator board. So now coming to the peripherals of the board. So the peripherals of the board are as follows. so this is the microcontroller pic 16 f7 fa 77a is the microcontroller of the heart of the board and then we have here double e prom chip and rtc chip rtc is real time real, real time clock chip and then we have um real time clock chip and then we have here leds so these are called as leds we can see here these are called as LEDs and then these are uh, this one, this two, this three, this display one, display two, display three. These are called as SSD seven segment display. And here RB, RB not RB one, RB two. These are called as switches. These are switches. And here these are digital keypad switches. So here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, star zero hash. These here. This is called as 
switches in the matrix keypad format that is row and columns format this is referred to as matrix keypad and then there is a fan heater buzzer relays and so on so and now here this green screen we are which we are seeing now this is called as lcd liquid crystal display and also there are a lot of other components present as we can see here so these here which i'm pointing to these are called as potentiometers so this is the overall peripherals of the board so coming to the microcontroller which i have used in my project pic 16 fa 77a microcontroller this is the photo of the microchip this is the microchip and this is the photo of the pin diagram this is the pin diagram photo so what is pic 16 fa 77a microcontroller it is a 40 pin pic microcontroller designed using risc architecture manufactured by microchip and is commonly used in embedded projects it supports both hardware pin interrupts and timer interrupts it has three timers in it two of which are 8 bit timers while one of is 16 bit timer it also supports many communication protocols like cedar protocol parallel protocol and antc protocol This is the block diagram of internal architecture of PIC sixteen FA double seven A microcontroller. The PIC microcontroller is built around hardware architecture where two memories, one for program and other one for data, are separated. This is program memory we can see here, and the data memory. Separate buses are used for program and data memories. PIC microcontroller uses RAM or known as file registers to store data during execution and a working register called W register to perform arithmetic and logic functions. See, we can see a working register or W register here and arithmetic and logic unit here. User program is stored in the flash program memory and the status register is used to indicate the status of microcontroller. it has five ports on it starting from port a to port e so coming to the brief explanation of the components clcd clcd is the abbreviation of the full form of clcd is character liquid crystal display and is the most basic form of an electronic display device which is most commonly used so most importantly this model can be interfaced much easily unlike other models with no complexity in both hardware and software the main advantage of using clcd instead of seven segment display and other multi segment leds is that there is no limitation in displaying special and custom characters animations and so on in pixim lab there are two types of displays 16 cross 2 display and 16 cross 4 display in my project i will be implementing 16 cross 4 display so rc characters and some special characters are this are also displayed on the screen so there are two types of communication modes that are 4 bit mode and 8 bit mode and it also consists of two registers that is command register and data register so this is the picture of the clcd tactile switch what is tactile switch it is a switch whose operation is perceptible by touch these small size switches are placed on pcbs and are used to close an electric circuit when the button is pressed by a person these are very tiny sized tiny size switches so uh, there are optional features such as size board mounting and ceiling structure for us to select for their applications and so on my project uses this switch to select the mode of operation as well as to set the temperature and time bouncing effect there is a metal plate and terminal as we can see here spurious pulse detection while pressing or releasing the tactile switch is called as bouncing effect matrix keypad as i've already told about the matrix keypad while explaining about the peripherals of the pixim lab simulator the that board 
So what is matrix keypad? It is a small compact input device that accepts user inputs and processed by microcontrollers. A matrix keypad is the kind of keypad you see on microwave ovens, gas pumps, and calculators. So it consists of number of tactile switches arranged in row and column format. The advantage of microcontroller pro sorry, the advantage of matrix keypad is that the use of it will allow the programmer to reduce the number of pins to be used. So the picture here is the four cross three matrix keyboard. Interrupts and interrupt service routine. Interrupt is a signal to the CPU to immediately begin executing different code, the code that is written in response to the cause of the interrupt. So basically interrupt is a communication process that is set up in a microprocessor or a microcontroller in which an internal or external device requests the microprocessor or microcontroller to stop the processing and these microprocessors and microcontrollers acknowledges the request and attends the request. So this is about the interrupt. But what is interrupt service routine? That is ISR. It is a software routine that hardware invokes in response to an interrupt. ISR examines an interrupt and determines how to handle it and executes the handling and then returns to a logical interrupt value. So one of the basic example can be a routine that handles keyboard even such as pressing or releasing any key. So coming to the part of timers. Timers is a clock that controls the sequence of an event while counting in fixed or defined intervals of time. A timer is used for producing precise time delay. So it is an important application in embedded systems as it maintains the timing of an operation in sync with a system clock or an external clock. The PIC16 FI77A PIC microcontroller has three timer modules. They are named as timer 0, timer 1 and timer 2. The timer 0 and timer 2 are 8-bit timers and timer 1 is a 16-bit timer. So these modules help to perform various timer, counter or PWM generation. So we can, this is the block diagram of timer. See, oscillator and external clock is connected to the clock select and prescale art, timer enabled or disabled here, timer count overflow or interrupt enabled. Now, coming to the demonstration of my project. So I'll be demonstrating my project that is microwave oven simulation using MP Lab ID and Pixim Lab software. So this is the Pixim Lab board, Pixim Lab simulator board. So first, um, in order to uh, start with my demonstration, we need to configure a few things. The board which I'll be using is Pix Genius. And the microcontroller is Pix 16F8 A. See, we, we can see the micro grill convection start and modes displayed on this. So before this message was displayed, powering on, see, I'll display it again. See, powering on and microwave oven message is displayed on this green screen. So now I'll be giving a demonstration of my project. So before that, as I said earlier, as I explained earlier, microwave oven is an electric oven that heats and cooks food by exposing it to electromagnetic radiation in the microwave frequency range. In this busy life, microwave ovens are very helpful for some cooking purposes. So after the configurations, we'll now start with the demonstration. So uh, I have told about the configurations. The LCD here is of two types, as I explained earlier, 16 cross 2 and 16 cross 4. In my project, I'll be using 16 cross 4. So there are four modes in my project, micro mode, grill mode, convection mode, and start mode. In order to implement micro mode, we need to press one. In order to implement grill mode, we need to press two. For convection mode, three. And for start, we need to press four. 
So let us start with micro mode. So I'll be pressing here one. So the maximum power set is 900 volts. So the time format is minutes and seconds. So I will be setting the time for 2 minutes 50 seconds. So in order to clear the value or in order to erase this value, I have to press star key. So this clears the uh, entered value and displays 0, 0. Now, I will be giving new value as 40 seconds. So in order to enter this, I have to press hash key. So now we can see my timer has started and the fan has started to rotate. So in order to resume this time, we need to press 4 and to pause 5 and to stop this, we have to press 6. So I'll be pausing my time now. As we can see, I have paused my time to tw at 22 seconds and the fan has stopped rotating as well. So to resume the timer, I need to press 4. So now we can see I have resumed my time and the fan has started to rotate. And the buzzer should be on the left side to hear the buzzer sound. Yeah, the buzzer sound is heard and the cooking time is up message is displayed on the green screen. Green screen. So now we are done with micro mode. Moving on to the grill mode. For implementing grill mode, we need to press 2. So, just like a micro mode, we need to give some time here. I'll be giving 40 seconds and hash key to enter. The same, like 4, 5, 6, 4, 2, resume and uh, 5, to pause and 6, to stop. If I press 4 without pausing my timer, the timer will be implemented by 30 seconds. I'll press 4 now. We can see the timer is being implemented to 30 seconds. See, since I pressed 4, the timer has been again incremented to 30 seconds. It's incremented by 30 seconds. In order to stop this, I'll be pressing 4. So let's, sorry, 6. In order to stop the timer, I have to press 6. So the timer has been stopped and the fan has also been stopped rotating. Now we are done with micro mode and grill mode. Moving on to the convection mode. To implement convection mode, we need to press 3. So, so the temperature entered is in Celsius degree format. So the temperature is set to maximum of 250 degrees Celsius. So any value above 250 degrees Celsius is considered as invalid. Let's try giving value above 250. I have given 300 here and I'll press enter. We can see the enter varied in temperature message displayed on screen with the buzzer sound. Now I'll give valid temperature as 24 and press enter. We can see the preheating phase and the time is already set to 3 minutes. So it will start preheating the oven for 3 minutes. This prevents woven from damaging. So let us wait for 160 seconds.
another 60 seconds to go. So here, this button here should be towards the LCD in order to see the messages or anything displayed on the green screen. If we set this button to, towards GLCD, we cannot see anything displayed on the green screen. So now I have to set the time just like in micro mode and grill mode. I will be setting for 15 seconds and give hash to enter. So here we can see the same format like 4 to start or resume, 5 to pause and 6 to stop. And now when the timer has gone down to zero, the cooking time is up, Is the message has been displayed with the buzzer sound. And the last mode I'll be implementing is start mode. So to implement that mode, I have to press four. So this is, or this is initially or automatically set to 30 seconds. I mean, I, I don't have to enter the time. It is already set to 30 seconds and the same format like 4, 5, 6, like 4 to start or resume, 5 to pause and 6 to stop. Now cooking time up message has been displayed with the buzzer sound on. So I have implemented all four modes in my project. But what is the difference between micro mode and grill mode? Micro mode is set at low temperature and grill mode is set at high temperature. So, for example, um, uh, in micro mode, we can cook food like popcorn to make, to prepare popcorn. And in grill mode, like for, um, especially for grilling effect for food like uh, corn, vegetables or anything, any grilled food. And for convection mode, we can, uh, First, first we, we have to set the oven to preheat for a particular temperature. And then uh, it, it can be used for, to bake uh, cakes, cookies, or pizzas. And the start mode is used for just heating purposes, like water and like heating water and uh, bun like that, etc. So this is about the demonstration of my project, microwave oven simulation. What are the learning outcomes of my project and, and my internship? So what I've learned throughout the internship. So I have listed few points as the learning outcomes. I have gained in-depth knowledge about the internal working of embedded systems. And I have hands-on programming and domain skills. And I had real-time experience throughout my internship and was introduced to different software along with their interfacing. And I exhibited better problem solving skills by analyzing underlying issues to challenges. And I had a good exposure in standard industry practices of software development. I would like to thank MLZ Information Technologies for giving me such a wonderful opportunity to gain my technical knowledge. And I would like to thank my mentor as well, Rajni Ma'am, for giving for um, supporting me and guiding me throughout the internship. Thank you.